correctly, like catching a bullet tricks. Now, obviously, tricks of this category, under normal circumstances, are never actually supposed to involve real bullets being fired by oh a magician's God. assistant. Yo, what's good, guys? Kyung here. I am back again with another reaction video, and today, we are going to be looking at dumb ways people have died. Man, that sounds so interesting. I did these kind of videos in the past, and you guys really, really like it, so I'm doing another one today. Don't forget to give this video like an early thumbs up, really, really help out the channel. Let's get this video to maybe 100 likes, maybe? That will literally make my day if this video reach 100 likes. Without further ado, let's get right in with the soul. Despite all the advancements of modern society, people still find ways to fall through the safety nets and put themselves in danger. Some people are so dumb, no amount of health and safety regulations can keep them around past their self-inflicted expiry date. So, without further ado, let's oh, no. <laughs> let some of the unfortunate souls who I feel so bad for that little cute winning a posthumous Darwin Award in the process. The famous Darwin Award for doing something stupid. Dumpster drank. Of all the places you should never gather a nice refreshing drink from, a landfill site is pretty high on the list. Or at least it should be. Ew. But for one couple from Belarus, a landfill seemed just as good as a convenience store for acquiring drinks back in October 2020. While scouring the local dump, as you do, a man found this bottle, filled with a mysterious murky liquid, and took the bottle home to share its contents with his wife. Ew. It seemed the pair assumed it contained some perfectly safe-to-drink homemade hooch, and like a nice bottle of wine after a hard day's work, popped it open to share. What in the world? They must be doing something wrong with their brain. I mean, just look at that bottle. Does that look like it is drinkable? Oh, heck no. It looks so nasty. I would just threw it away. Why would you bring it home and share it with your wife? These two, they might, might, might have some problem in their hair or something. And like a nice bottle of wine after a hard day's work, popped it open to share. Unsurprisingly, the next day, the couple became extremely ill. And while emergency services were called, it proved too late. The concoction in the bottle, it turned out, had indeed been homemade alcohol. But its owner had seemingly disposed of it after realizing it wasn't very good at all. In fact, it was completely poisonous. As a result, the it. couple kicked the bucket together, after what might be considered the worst romantic dinner of all time. I mean, you can go buy your alcohol for $2 at Walmart, or $3 for like a bottle or something. Why would you go to Lanfield to I'm buy an alcohol? Dumb, right? Well, yeah, it I'll is tell dumb. you what most certainly isn't dumb, doing yourself the favor of liking this video and subscribing to be amazed. For With sure. fascinating and funny content posted daily, it might just be the smartest thing you do today. Now, I agree, back to they some are really good. Who are the opposite of smart. On the fence. Some people will go to great lengths to protect their personal possessions. But one Brazilian man's desperation to keep his car safe from thieves back in 2010 proved to be his downfall. As robberies were becoming increasingly frequent in his local area, the fellow decided to keep his car protected by building a miniature electric fence around it. Oh. Only this wasn't any old touch it and get a slightly uncomfortable warning shock kind of fence. This one was amped up and designed to hurt a lot. Oh, I bet he got to touch well, it himself. As nobody stole the car. But things soon came to a shocking conclusion. When, <laughs> on one occasion, he forgot he'd left the electric fence turned on when he attempted to move it aside to get into his car. He was electrocuted. I and knew he it. his contraption I with such a it. high current that it killed him. Talk about being your own worst enemy. Oh, man. That is not a good way to protect your car, you know? If you got electric fence around your car, like the worst might have happened is you forget it and it will electric 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 cute you to death. That that's the word I'm looking for, okay? Man, it's the worst way to die because it's extremely painful. A refreshing swim. How far would you go to save your phone? Would you be crazy enough to dive into an icy, partially frozen river to retrieve it? 
Well, one man from Detroit did exactly that in February 2020. While fishing through a large hole he'd cut out of the ice, the fellow accidentally dropped his phone into the water. Clearly lacking in any notion of self-preservation, he dove straight Ooh. into the hole after it. Unfortunately, he failed to realize that sudden submersion in ice-cold water can be pretty bad for the human body. It can send you into shock, can instantly paralyze your muscles if you haven't received training beforehand, and can even cause a heart attack due to intense constriction of your blood vessels. Whether one of these physiological problems took hold, or whether he simply became disoriented under the ice, remains unclear. All we know for sure is that he didn't re-emerge until several hours later, when emergency responders pulled his lifeless body from the water. Oh, we can only man. assume he must have had a glorious collection of cute animal pics on his phone to make jumping into icy doom seem worth it. Dude, I bet he had an iPhone 11 Pro. He just got it like the other day or something. It was like a brand new phone and he just could not let it go. That's why he jumped for it. All for a thousand dollars. Is it worth it? Definitely not. Lesson not learned. As the COVID-19 pandemic came into full swing in 2020, it brought a lot of Darwin Award contenders out of the woodwork. One example occurred at a Serbian Orthodox church in November 2020, following the death of a high-ranking bishop. The bishop's death had been caused by coronavirus, yet the funeral held at the church showed no regard at all for the oh, types oh. of conditions that led to such an infection. The funeral was essentially a checklist of everything you shouldn't do if you want to avoid the disease. There was large crowds in an enclosed space, oh my countless God. people being fed Holy Communion from the same unwashed spoon, oh. and of course, countless people kissing the hand of the recently deceased, who, oh. I must reiterate, died of coronavirus. Face On pump. top of that, there were only a handful of people wearing masks. In a twist you probably saw coming, almost immediately after the funeral, the church patriarch who'd organized and led the event also became seriously ill with COVID-19. He too died, having willingly failed to respect the advice of scientists on one of the most serious health disasters of the past 100 years. I just hope his funeral was a little more restrained. I know, I hope so too. Clothes lined. There are many dangers facing motorcyclists on the road, but one of the greatest of all is a rider's own recklessness. This was proven one morning in 2008, when one motorcyclist took the ride of a lifetime near Minnesota Key in Florida. Witnesses reported seeing the risky rider, wearing nothing but swim trunks and sneakers, speeding towards the Minnesota Key drawbridge, which was in the process of being raised up. He ignored the flashing red lights warning drivers to stay away from the bridge and instead attempted to accelerate, oh, no. hoping to jump the ever-growing gap. Dude, he, flash, fail. he didn't make it. He'd failed to spot the safety gate arms, which had already descended. He crashed head first oh. straight into one of the gates and was oh. instantly swept from his bike and onto the asphalt, while the bike itself continued up the ramp. I bet the bike was like, I believe I can fly. Cross the gap to the I other side. I can while the rider the failed to survive the ordeal, at least one of them made it across. <laughs> Proving a point. On May 19, 1885, a man named Robert Emmett Odlum set out to be the first man to jump into New York City's East River from the Brooklyn Bridge. His reasons for this strange aspiration were surprisingly well-meaning for the most part. First and foremost, he sought to prove that, against the commonly held beliefs of the time, people did not die by simply falling through the air. He hoped this demonstration would encourage people to be willing to jump from burning buildings into a safety net in the incident of a fire, as people were too distrusting of this idea at the time. He also hoped to achieve some fame in proving it was safe. But That's unfortunately, any hopes he'd had of reassuring people about the safety of leaping from great heights were soon dashed when it came time to jump. 
As Odlum leapt from the bridge's roadway, 130 feet up, he attempted to stay straight in the air, but a strong wind blew him into a diagonal angle of descent. Uh -oh. This meant when he eventually struck the water, the angle of impact caused some serious damage. Slapping the water at approximately 62 miles per hour, it exerted enough force to rupture his spleen, liver, and kidneys, and break several of his ribs. The official oh. cause of death, however, was declared to be concussion. On the bright side, people now know that rapidly falling doesn't kill you as much as the landing. In the words of British TV legend Jeremy Clarkson, speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly becoming stationary, that's what gets you. Oh, man, I just feel so bad for the guy, you know. He was trying to prove something good for people when you have a fire jump off a building, you know so you can save yourself but at the end he got himself killed oh man i kind of I, I was I, I was feeling kind of sad for him hazard prevention sometimes you really have to wonder about people's sense of logic case in point two guys who suddenly landed on the sense of hazard awareness after doing something incredibly dangerous and stupid back in 2002. in a farm field in pennsylvania two friends were practicing their marksmanship by shooting, not at bottles or cans, but the electrical insulators oh, holding no! power lines aloft overhead. After shooting six of the insulators off of two utility poles, a live, high-voltage wire fell to the ground, risking setting the entire surrounding field ablaze. Suddenly seized by an uncharacteristic sense of health and safety, one of the men rushed over to the wire and attempted to pick it up to move it to prevent danger. The instant he seized it in his hand, the powerful current passed through him and he was fatally electrocuted. I mean, I knew that would happen. I knew he would pick it up. I mean, they was using a gun to suit the electrical wires. They probably did not have any common sense. I mean, I, they, their mom probably forgot to gift them common sense when, when they were born. The lesson? If you're going to suddenly grow a conscience, maybe try doing it before you do something lethally stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Safety first. The saying, practice what you preach, has never been more ironically fitting than in the case of one man who met his untimely demise in Australia in 2017. While filming a forklift safety video, the owner of a safety training school was thrown from the forklift he was driving and fatally crushed by oh. his payload. An investigation revealed that, despite what the intentions of the video had been, the man had broken several crucial rules to forklift safety. He was driving over rough, uneven terrain at high speed, all while not wearing a seatbelt. Alongside an unhealthy sprinkling of driver error, it proved that sometimes you really should listen to your own advice. Hmm, dang, he just got maybe a little bit too cocky maybe. He was like, ah, you'll be alright. But at the end, he regretted, I bet. It was late. Okay, it was way too late when he regretted. Don't go chasing waterfalls. As most rational people can easily conclude, safety advice displayed at dangerous locations tend to be there for a reason. Not so bright people, however, often seem to have problems grasping this idea. This was proven by one woman on a pleasure trip to a natural waterfall at a tourist hotspot in Kaka, Colombia in January 2020. While searching for the perfect selfie angle, the woman ignored safety warnings about wandering too close to the edge of the waterfall. Paying more attention to her phone than where she was headed, she ended up plummeting over the oh, waterfall's no! edge, straight down into the boulder and rock-filled pool below. The hard landing caused enough damage to her skull to set her expiry date to right there, right then. Oh my uh, god! How many misguided lives will be lost before people finally learn selfies are never worth dying over? Yeah, Instagram, Instagram likes are definitely not worth dying over, okay? They are worth worthless. Vending Fatality at some point, you may have heard you shouldn't shake a vending machine because it might fall on you. But nobody ever believes that's ever actually happened. Dude, I never believed that. <laughs> will, will, will it happen? 
Dude, I let me right? just keep well, watching. As it turns out, it actually did happen back in 1984 no in no Sea Harbor, Florida. As a in newspaper Florida? article from the time recounts, a man had been attempting to get a can of soda from the vending machine in his apartment complex's recreation center. Whether he paid his cash and the machine failed to dispense his goods, or whether he just decided to shake it to try and get a free drink, remains unclear to this day. All that's known for sure is that an hour later, the thirsty fellow was found utterly crushed with the vending machine on top of him. Oh my Yeesh. goodness. Go I thought those stuff only happen in the cartoons. I didn't even know it would happen in real life. Dude. By this tale, if you want to stay Painful safe, death. Safety Harbor is not the place to go, especially if you're thirsty. <laughs> Troublesome transport. In 2020, a poorly chosen seating arrangement on a bus resulted in the unexpected demise of several people in Manitou, India. While being transported to a wedding venue on a very overcrowded bus, several of the guests climbed up onto the rooftop for the ride. This was, rooftop? of course, already a very risky idea, from the risk of falling off alone. But it wasn't a fall that proved to be these rooftop riders' ruin. Their downfall came, instead, in the form of some high-tension, relatively low-hanging electrical wires. Uh -oh. At their lofty perch, the riders were at head level with the wires, and before they had the chance to react, three of them struck the exposed wire directly and were electrocuted. One was killed instantly, another succumbed to his injuries later, while the third survived, albeit thoroughly fried. Next time, I've got a feeling he'll just wait for the next bus to come instead. I, I would too, you know. <laughs> Watching the skies. If an opportunity presented itself for you to communicate with extraterrestrials, would you take it? Yeah, and if so, I would. how far would you go to make sure you didn't let the chance pass you by? Well, one woman put the chance to commune with little green men above her own safety back in 1982. Believing she'd been contacted by some type of intergalactic power, she convinced a willing companion to accompany her in carrying out the instructions of her alien contacts. She claimed they'd commanded her to drive out to an isolated location in the northeastern Minnesota wilderness and await further instruction. Assuming this would be a hugely significant moment in the interstellar advancement of humankind, the pair did exactly that, despite the extremely snowy winter weather. Once parked up in the designated location, they dutifully awaited the arrival of their extraterrestrial acquaintances. No, it, they, they look waited, so dumb. And waited. And waited. Unfortunately, their food supplies ran out after a week, and they lost access to water when the nearby lake froze over. Still, they refused to leave their post, on the off chance that the aliens appeared while they were gone. Putting total faith in the idea that the aliens would appear before anything bad happened to either of them, they stayed in the freezing cold, with nothing to eat or drink. What? What, what kind of video, what kind of YouTube video did they watch? to convince them that the aliens will visit them. They probably watched too many Transformer videos. They thought Optimus Prime or somebody was about to come to Earth and take you or something like that, you know? Come on, you guys gotta grow up. You guys are like adults. That is not gonna work in the, in the real world. Eventually, frozen, starving, and fatally dehydrated, the woman died. Shortly after, the man accompanying her, in his much weakened state, and with the car having been rendered unusable by the icy conditions, crawled through a quarter mile of snow to save himself. He survived, but his alien contacting partner did not, and their little green guests never showed up. I, well, well, I guess the lady, her soul, probably went to another universe or went to a heaven. And that lady probably met another god or alien. I, I guess she finally uh, achieved her goal, you know, but risking her life. She, she will never come back to Earth again. That guy actually made a good choice by trying to save himself and, and live on Earth a little bit longer. Acting partner did not, and their little green guests never showed up. I guess the aliens must have got the wrong address. <laughs> Best seats in the house. 
For as long as there have been sports events requiring tickets, there have also been people trying to find ways to watch for free. This unfortunate tendency to save a bit of cash proved to be the quite literal downfall of a number of football fans in San Francisco back in 1900. To avoid the ticket fees, between 400 and 500 supporters clambered onto the roof of a glass factory so they could view a game taking place at San Francisco's nearby Old Recreation Park Stadium. But in a twist of fate that somehow occurred to none of them as a possibility, the factory roof proved incapable of supporting all that weight. 20 minutes after kickoff, not only did the roof collapse, but it also sent oh, the no. revelers falling directly onto the blazing hot brick cover of a furnace vat filled with molten glass. Oh. To paint a picture of how hot this furnace was, several of the men who fell onto the cover instantly caught a blaze. 22 of the participants in this ill-thought-out plan were sent shuffling off this mortal coil from the incident, while 100 more suffered serious injuries. While people today may still not have learned their lesson to always pay for tickets, they seem to have learned not to pile en masse onto factory roofs in the years since. <laughs> Deadliest Catch being a magician can be a dangerous job at times, particularly if you specialize in risky-looking illusions. While many classic nail-biting tricks are often much safer than they seem, some of them are genuinely hazardous if not followed correctly, like catching a bullet tricks. Now, obviously, tricks of this category, under normal circumstances, are never actually supposed to involve real bullets being fired by oh a magician's God. assistant. But in 1889, an early performer of this trick had a serious mishap on stage. Magician and cabinet maker Michael Hattal took to the stage, promising his audience he could catch a speeding bullet using nothing more than the American flag wrapped around his body. He called an assistant up to the stage and asked him to pick two pieces of ammunition from an ammo box for Hattal to load into a rifle. At this point, Hattal would usually switch out the rounds for blanks. But on this occasion, he accidentally swapped the real ammo for more ammo. The volunteer took aim and fired, delivering a fatal blow to the unfortunate performer. Luckily, Hattal survived just long enough to take responsibility for the blunder, oh my clearing God, the volunteer's that is scary. name on his deathbed. On the bright side, he certainly gave the audience a performance they'd remember. I mean, I mean, was the audience confused or did they know that he was actually taking a real bullet? Probably the audience would, uh, would have known because if the bullet went through his body, there would be so much blood coming out of the body. Man versus Cactus Staying on the topic of firearm mishaps now, we have the story of one man who lost a shootout against a stationary target. In 1982, a couple of petty criminals headed out into Arizona's Sonoran Desert for a decidedly dumb purpose, shooting at cacti. Their targets of choice were the local saguaro cacti, which can grow well over 40 feet tall, wow. a fact which should have probably raised some alarm bells. But it didn't, and the tremendous size and weight of each cactus only made them more appealing targets. The first cactus was shot down without incident, oh, thanks no. to the powerful blast of a 16-gauge shotgun. But the second target was larger, at almost 30 feet tall. One of the cactus vandals moved into point-blank range to deliver the kill shot pulled the trigger, and brought huge chunks of the two-ton spiky behemoth hey. raining down upon himself. He was killed almost instantly by the weight of the spiky chunks that landed on him, while his buddy lived to share the tale. I suppose the moral of the story is, don't bring a gun to a cactus fight. Yeah, the cactus was like, surprise, mother film, and then her came to death. <gasps> Holy crap, I, I guess he deserved it. Why would you sue a cactus? The cactus, they even bother you. You just leave the cactus alone, you know? But yeah, that is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. And my social media link is in the description below. And yeah, my name is Calvin. I'll see you guys next video.